Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. We're having our monthly tech meet, and today we're going to be talking about the heater system on a Silver Cloud 3 and the other clouds also. So, one of our members called me and said, hey, my heater doesn't work on my Silver Cloud 3. And he's, I said, that's perfect. We'll talk about heaters on Silver Clouds. And he says, does that, I said, bring your car down. And he says, does that mean the heater's going to work? I said, no, probably not. <laughs> uh, the heater systems on these cars are kind of antiquated, but actually for their time, I think they were pretty, pretty brilliant. The problem with heater systems is they have to be used on a regular basis. And if you don't use them, what happens is the, the coolant, the water reacts with the metals in the system, and the heater cores, which are what transfer the heat from the engine coolant to the air, which you pump into your cabin, they kind of plug up. They're like little radiators, that's what they are. And uh, Is that this car or newer cars as well? All cars, all cars. So if you never use your heater, and all of a sudden you move to another state where it's cold, and you go to use it the first time, <laughs> good luck. Uh, I always recommend if you have cars you don't drive much, run the AC and the heater system. Every time you drive it is a good thing. If, it, if you drive it once a month, run them both. You can get through the, the heat or the cold uh, for a short period of time. Same with the windows. Seats are another good thing to move around. Only because, like us, if we don't use our muscles and joints and are sedentary for a long period of time, we go to use them, we're going to hurt ourselves or they won't work. I have found that my head doesn't want to turn sometimes because I've got some arthritis, neck issues, I'm getting older, I've been working on cars a long time, back issues, all that kind of stuff. And for me, just getting to work and being physical every day helps me keep moving. So it's the same thing with these cars, on the, especially on heaters, because they plug up. Let's go over here. Over here we have some of the components that have been taken off of parts cars. This right here is on a Silver Cloud 2. This is a Silver Cloud 2. Uh, but this is the heater box, okay? So what we have is we have air coming in here from the front, right? There's a blower out here under the fender. This is mounted inside that right fender, okay? To get it out, you gotta remove that fender, which usually requires removing the door, I think. Yes, um, on the S2s, but not the S3s. <laughs> so air comes in here, right? Uh, and it, it's distributed inside this big box here. There are two flaps. If you get one of those diagrams, there's an upper flap and a lower flap, okay? Air comes in there, and it also comes in here. There's an upper and a lower system. This, there's a blower underneath that right seat, underneath the car. There's a blower that blows air in here, and it takes air from the cabin. Well, this, this is a Cloud 2, so vents to the back. On the Cloud 3, the vents open here. So that's recirculated air in the lower system. This is outside air in the upper system. Uh, inside this box, there's a heater core. On the Cloud 2, there's one heater core. And you can tell, I don't want to take it apart because these screws are hard to get off. Uh, there's only two hoses. So these go to the engine. The engine pumps in hot water and it returns it back to the front. There is a valve mounted in the engine compartment has a little electric motor that this is the water valve sorry the electric motor has a linkage that opens and closes this valve so that shuts off coolant or opens it up to circulate through that little radiator in there uh, as you can see this one it's kind of plugged that's the buildup the corrosion buildup, as you can see right in there, if you guys want to look at this, get closer, that will definitely not allow a flow. Okay, okay, there's that. Uh, if this electric motor, which is hooked up to your switches, doesn't work or is disconnected, hasn't been used in 30 years, don't count on it working. 
Okay. If that doesn't work, it's not going to open up the valve and close it off. I've seen a lot of these cars where the hoses are bypassed because the core will leak. Sometimes they'll leak. Now, this is Silver Cloud 2. Silver Cloud 3 would have two heater cores in here They're stacked on top of each other, smaller heater cores, and there'd be three hoses out under the, the fender, and then there's another hose from the inside uh, from the engine compartment. In this box, so now we'll talk about the factory air, because I know one's here and that's kind of important. That's documented on one of those handout sheets. This is the heater portion. As you can see, the air comes in here, goes up in front. You got a heater core here, so it directs the hot air through there. And it goes back into the cabin through these ducts. Okay. So this is the upper duct that goes to those fascia vents and the defrost. And this is the lower duct that goes underneath the dash. Now these hook in right in that uh, A-pillar area to plastic ducts under the dash. And obviously the upper ducts, they direct through hoses up to the fascia vents and then also the defrost. And then down below, they direct it down to your feet. Um, there's flaps up here that control the air coming in from up here. It'll shut out outside air. It'll direct the air down below here. It's easier to look at on the diagram. Um, these flaps, have these motors out in the engine compartment that operate them through a linkage. Once again, we have these little motors that are either disconnected or haven't been used in a thousand years that don't usually work. Okay, and the, the motors are really kind of cool. Uh, I don't think I have one apart right now because what they do is they'll have a ground circuit obviously because you got to have ground and then they'll redirect the voltage input to make this arm go in different positions. So you can control the temperature level and or the amount of air coming in. These are, are they, they move these flaps here in different positions. Um, as you can see, this one also has multiple terminals. It works the same way. So you can have full open, partially open. Usually, I think there's three wires to these. These will have the full gamut here, four or five. Um, and inside that motor, there's a little tiny, on this end is the motor part, it's a little tiny electrical motor. Typically, if you can access it, these are harder, but on a shadow they have a similar system. You can pull the brushes out, clean it up, put them back in and they'll start working again. Because the brushes against the copper or the, the copper commutator uh, just get gummy but not always. But on the other side, they have a, a gear, a big gear wheel, and it's got wipers on it with printed circuits on that, that gear so that the contacts from the electrical part, as the motor moves, it'll get, to, you know, depending on which wire you're at, it'll move to a certain point and there'll be a break in that con or contact and it'll stop moving. So that's its position on that input. They're kind of cool. I think they're really, really slick. When you think of the time period, you know, the 60s, early 60s, they made these things. 